Hey everyone, it's Nathan. And today I'm going to show you how you can use only three reverbs in your mix to get more clarity, punch, and detail. Now, I think this is a really important paradigm to follow because it allows you to really effortlessly create depth and detail in your mix. So what we're going to do to start things off is I'm going to run you through what the difference is between our short tail or small reverb, our medium tail or medium reverb, and then our long tail or huge hall reverb. Uh, so what the difference is between these, the main difference is the length of the decay, which is the reason they're called tail reverbs. Um, with a short tail reverb, which you typically use on elements that are in the front of your mix, you're going to have a shorter decay of anywhere from a half second or less. Now, these are just soft suggestions, but with the medium reverb, you're going to have anywhere from a half second to 1.5 seconds of decay. And with the long reverb, you're going to have anywhere from 1.5 seconds to 20 seconds of decay. And it just goes by taste. So what we're going to do is we're just going to play everything. And we're going to have these three reverbs to start. We're going to mute them. And then we're going to play through everything. And I'm going to unmute them one by one. And you'll hear how it opens up the kind of depth and detail of the mix and adds kind of more perceptibility to where the instruments are placed. So we're going to play everything and then we'll uh, see how that sounds. <laughs> So right off the bat, I'm going to let you know that the way that I really created a sense of depth was heavily reliant on just two reverbs, which are our medium reverb and our long tail reverb, which if you look at the instruments that are going into the medium tail reverb, it's one, two, three, basically two instruments at this moment that you're listening to the track, you just have two instruments that you're actually hearing going into that reverb. Uh, oh, my bad. Actually, there's three because there's some percussion that goes into it. So we'll run through that in more detail later. But just so you have an idea, the point of that reverb is to not blend with my long tail reverb, but to contrast with it in terms of aggressiveness. And that's why I send percussion to it. So the long tail reverb is just one instrument, which is our drop instrument, which we will show you. Actually, it's this one right here. So it's pretty helpful to notice the distinction between using a medium reverb and a long tail reverb. And the way that I think about it is the when I'm populating the medium reverb, I, in this particular mix, I wanted it to kind of be very grabby. The things that went into it, I wanted them to go into it loudly so that I would hear it and then it would suddenly decay. So we're going to start by looking at the medium reverb because it's essentially the foundation of contrast for the rest of the reverbs in our mix. And so you'll notice that I've got a 2.5 second decay on our medium reverb. And because it's a little more forward and present in our mix, it has about 9,000 hertz for the high cut. And high cut with a reverb essentially tells you 
how far or near the instruments going into the reverb sound to you. So naturally, something that's really far away, the reverb that gets to you is going to have less of those high frequencies because you've, if you've ever heard somebody far away yelling, then you know what that's like. Their voice kind of tapers off in the high end. You can't really hear it. So we're not going to go into too much detail about how to tweak reverbs because really when it comes to putting a song together, the most important controls coupled with the power of presets are decay, high cut, and mix. Just those three. That's all you need. You can find the rest in your presets. Don't overcomplicate things for yourself because music is a creative process. You really want to give yourself the maximum amount of flow to just make stuff up. And if you're tweaking your reverb, you might not be able to do that, but you know, you can do whatever you want at any moment. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the elements that are going into the medium reverb by themselves. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to solo that and we're going to listen to them. Except I need to solo them. So really what's happening there is I have our arpeggiated synth, which is like kind of like a guitar sound. I have it going into the reverb. And because it's constant, it kind of, and it's not really that loud in terms of our mix and placement, I needed something to kind of signal to your ear that, oh, there's this kind of very present space that's close by. So what I did is a trick I like to do is I like to use percussion to let the ear know that there's this closer region in the mix. And so I'll send these kind of, if I have a loud or more present percussion, I will send it to my medium tail reverb and I'll send a lot of it. So if you look at both of these uh, instruments, they're being sent to the reverb with a lot of send. And if we just solo them now, you can hear them. My bad, we gotta solo these. So, just notice, I'm gonna play the entire mix right now, and I'm actually gonna mute these tracks, these two percussive tracks that are being sent to it, and you'll notice how that kind of perceptibility of the entire mix kind of just falls off. So. We're going to mute these and have a listen. So it really is cool how that adds more depth. Now, keep in mind that really what brings it together is, so you have this stuff that's in the kind of medium space of our mix or the medium verb. It's the stuff that goes into our long reverb, which is our drop instrument, that allows us to contrast the difference between the medium reverb and the far back of our mix. So what we're going to do is we're just going to play the what I think are the three main instruments running into both the medium reverb and the long reverb. So I'm going to solo our guitar instrument. I'm going to solo our percussive instruments. And I'm also going to solo our drop instrument. And you can hear how they work together.
Now, that's pretty cool. Uh, what's happening there is everything sounds nice and wet, nice and full. You can hear everything and it just sounds amazing. Um, however, the mix is kind of missing something. Obviously, there's other elements that need to populate it, but what I can hear, and maybe you can hear this too, is that there's really nothing forward in the mix to contrast what you're hearing that, you know, you're hearing that it's wet, you're hearing that it's far away, but how can you really tell? Because there's nothing dry, and the way that we perceive sounds is through, largely through a system of contrast. So what I've done is when it comes to the rest of the instruments in the track, they're comparatively dry. So that means that they're dry in a relative way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start adding in all the instruments that I know from memory are a little drier, which is just the rest of the stuff that's either just completely dry in some cases or being sent to our small reverb. And I'm going to add them in one by one and notice as these elements that are populating our medium and long tail reverbs, as those are playing, notice how the more I bring stuff in that is being sent to the short tail reverb or that is just completely dry, notice how it adds a contrast so that you can hear the stuff that's really forward and then you can hear the stuff that's really far back. So we're just going to play that and let's see what we got. So it's pretty cool. Now, you know, I don't want you guys thinking that I held out too much. So looking at our uh, our drum reverb here, it's just a standard short tail reverb. It has 0.18 seconds of decay. And uh, in particular, I want to show you the EQing I've done on it. Typically with drums, I will high pass the uh, reverb at anywhere from 100 hertz to about 300 hertz. It just depends. Because in some cases, you're sending your kick to this reverb, and because your kick has a lot of low end, if you send it to this reverb, all this energy down here is going to get populated by your kick, and excuse me, it's just going to swamp your mix. It's going to mess up your low end. So you high pass your small reverb. Now, EQing reverbs is a very powerful technique. You can use it to further shape your reverb when you're finished. The typical reverb EQ choices that I make are just high passing and low passing. But sometimes I will boost and, and cut things out to get elements to sit better in the mix. But you pretty much just do it according to ear. So let's look at our medium reverb. There's no EQ on there but we'll look at it anyway. So with our medium reverb, like I said, it's anywhere from 0.5 seconds to uh, 4 seconds. And that's important to remember because your medium reverb wants to last long enough that you can hear it, but that if you were to suddenly stop playing instruments that were going into it, it would decay fast enough that it's not cluttering up your mix because you really want to be able to hear the long tail reverb. So what we're going to do is we're going to solo our uh, an instrument going into our medium tail reverb. Uh, let's see. And 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that if I actually get rid of the long reverb and just play the medium reverb and the small reverb together by themselves, so we're just going to mute this long reverb, you'll hear how everything just sounds more forward in the mix. Now you just have your mid-range and you have the front stuff, but there's nothing in the back. And so it's kind of a reverse of what we showed you earlier. So we're going to listen and we'll see what we have. So, you know, I uh, I really hope this is uh, simplified reverbs for you. They're really it's it's a really simple strategy to just use three reverbs. Um, I can't remember where I learned it from, but it you know I remember I read it and then I still used like ten different reverbs on some tracks, and that can be okay in some situations as long as you're careful about how you're using them. But using three three reverbs really gives you maximum control, and, and it also saves you and keeps you safe from really making the mistake of swamping your mix. Because once you know that you have three different regions that you're trying to fill in with energy in your mix, then you know in terms of perspective where you want things to sit, and you're not complicating the process anymore. Now, in some cases, you might have a reverb directly on your tracks as an effect, and that's okay too, but you pretty much just want to do things how you like. So, you know, I hope this tutorial was helpful. Uh, if you guys like this tutorial, please leave a comment and like and subscribe, uh, and I look forward to releasing the next one, and I'll see you guys around.